The Jiawen Emperor was the second emperor of the Ming Dynasty in China. His personal name was Zhu Yunwen. The era name of his reign, Jiawen, means establishing civility and represented a sharp change in tone from Hongwu. The era name of the reign of his grandfather and predecessor, the Hongwu Emperor. His reign did not last long. An attempt to restrain his uncles led to the Jingyan Rebellion. The Jiawen Emperor was eventually overthrown by one of his uncles, Zhu Dai, who was then enthroned as the Yongle Emperor. Although the Yongle Emperor presented a charred body as Zhu Yunwen's, rumors circulated for decades that the Jiawen Emperor had disguised himself as a Buddhist monk and escaped from the palace when it was set on fire by Zhu Di's forces. Some people speculated that one of the reasons behind why the Yongle Emperor sponsored the Admiral Zheng He on his treasure voyages in the early 15th century was for Zheng He to search for the Jiawen Emperor, who was believed to have survived and fled to Southeast Asia. Some historians believe that the Jiawen Emperor had indeed survived and escaped from Nanjing. But the official histories of the Ming Dynasty were modified later during the Qing Dynasty to please the Manchu rulers. Early life Zhu Yunwen's father, Zhu Biao, was the eldest son of Zhu Yuanzhang. He was made crown prince in 1368 after Zhu Yuanzhang founded the Ming Dynasty and became known as the Hongwu Emperor. After Zhu Biao died in 1392, the Hongwu Emperor initially considered choosing a successor from among his other sons, who wielded considerable an influence in their respective princedoms throughout the Ming Empire. However, after several months of careful deliberation and discussion with his subjects, he decided to uphold the strict rules of primogeniture laid out in his imperial ancestral instructions, and designated Zhu Biao's son, Zhu Yunwen, as the new crown prince. Reign. Zhu Yunwen succeeded his grandfather upon the latter's death in 1398 and was enthroned as the Jiawen Emperor. One of the first things he did after taking over the reins of power was to rehabilitate and set free the victims of the Hongwu Emperor's purges, particularly those who had contributed to the founding the Ming Dynasty. Upon the advice of the Confucian scholar bureaucrats in his government, he continued his grandfather's policy of restraining the court eunuchs and began taking back territory and power from his uncles. Within the year 1399, he demoted or arrested several of his uncles and even caused one of them to commit suicide. In response to the Jiawen Emperor's crackdown on the influence of imperial princes, Zhu Dai captured and co-opted the princedom of his 17th brother, Zhu Quan, thereby putting himself in control of the bulk of the Ming army in northern China. He also won the support of several Mongol tribes when he burnt down Danning, the capital of Zhu Quan's princedom, and evacuated Ming forces from the princedom. Later, Zhu Dai feigned illness and madness to convince the Jiawen Emperor to release three of his sons, who were being kept as hostages in Nanjing to prevent Zhu Dai from rebelling against the Emperor. However, the Jiawen Emperor became wary of Zhu Dai and tried to arrest him later, but failed. Zhu Dai then launched the Jingyan campaign against the Jiawen Emperor. Fall from power, aided by eunuch spies and turncoat generals, Zhu Dai succeeded in capturing the Ming army's Yangtze fleet and entered the capital Nanjing through an opened gate in 1402. Through propaganda, Zhu Dai tried to portray himself as someone like the Duke of Zhou, who supported his nephew, King Cheng of the Zhou dynasty, and waged war against the king's evil advisers. Zhu Di's entrance into Nanjing was almost immediately followed by the burning of the imperial palace and the presentation of three charred bodies, identified as the Jiawen Emperor, his consort and his crown prince. The Jiawen era was then declared void and historical records about this era were systematically altered or destroyed. Zhu Dai ascended the throne as the Yongle Emperor and established the new imperial capital in Beijing, formerly the capital of his princedom. Thousands of scholars and the families who opposed the Yongle Emperor were executed, the most famous were Fang Xiaoru and three others remembered as the Four Martyrs. 
There were rumors that the Jowan Emperor managed to escape from Nanjing by disguising as a Buddhist monk. Some records reported that one year after he became emperor, the Yongle Emperor sent Zheng He and Hu Ying to search for the Jowan Emperor. In 1423, Hu returned and reported to the Yongle Emperor about his findings in a private conversation. The Yongle Emperor subsequently promoted Hu. Some parts of the historical text History of Ming, the authoritative history of the Ming dynasty, mentioned that one of the reasons behind why the Yongle Emperor sponsored the Admiral Zheng He's treasure voyages in the early 15th century was that the Emperor wanted Zheng He to help him search for the Jowan Emperor, who was believed to have survived and fled to Southeast Asia. Other records relate that decades later, the Jowan Emperor returned to the Imperial Palace and lived the rest of his life in obscure retirement. The three charred bodies presented to the Yongal Emperor were not given a full burial and there is no known tomb of the Jowan Emperor. He was initially denied a temple name and left unhonored in imperial shrines. The Prince of Fu, a self-proclaimed emperor of the Southern Ming Dynasty, granted the Jowan Emperor the temple name Huisong in 1644. But this name is not generally remembered or accepted in official Chinese histories. The Yongle Emperor changed many history records about the Jowan Emperor, but the people still remembered the Jowan Emperor's kindness during his four-year reign. Family, father, Zhu Biao, Crown Prince Yewen, eldest son and initial successor of the Hongwu Emperor, mother, Lady Lu, daughter of Lu Chang Ben and Zhu Biao's second wife, honored as Empress Dowager after her son ascended the throne.